Hi everyone, it's Eric from ecartman12.blogspot.com and welcome to my continued coverage of the HP Pavilion TouchSmart laptop. Now this is the first machine that I have ever tested that is running Windows 8 and I've been using Windows 8 for about a week now and I'm going to give you guys my impressions on it since I am pretty much a first time user of Windows 8. Now when you first load up any system running Windows 8 you'll get this tiled interface which has been carried out directly from Windows phones and if you've got a touchscreen this is an absolute pleasure to use. As you can see, very, very fluid. If I swipe down, I have a list of all the applications running on the machine. And if I swipe back up right here, again, I've got the whole tiled interface. Now, what if I, if I tap and hold, then I can actually customize. I can turn this live tile off so it does not update with live information like these uh, tiles are. You can resize it to make it a bigger size. You can also tap multiple ones of these so you can drag and drop them or move them around. Or what you could do is let's say let's just scroll down here tap and hold then what you can also do is just tap onto any one and then press unpin from the start so that's pin to the start menu let's find something that's not so pin to start and what happens then it should normally just take you to the uh, start menu so let's just press that customize there we go so there you go it's right there now you can tap and hold and as I said, you can resize it to large, wide, medium, or small. And large is a nice large size kind of tile. And then you can uninstall the app or unpin it from the start menu. And you can also name it in groups as well, these apps. So I've got some benchmarks here. I've got games on this side and various others. So it really is very, very nice to organize everything on this screen. So apart from obviously sort of like customizing your home screen, that these apps are obviously here to use. Now, there are two sets of applications. One is your your typical desktop sort of software applications you'd get on all Windows computers and the second is the Metro style which you get on more like Windows Phone or Windows uh, or Windows 8 RT tablets so let's say I want to go on to let's look for the eBay app loads up really quickly and it's extremely nicely laid out I mean look at that this looks really really good you have got your watching over here you can sell an item there your messages your buying your buying items save searches and purchase history very well done if you just swipe over here you have the list of all your watching and daily deals so if you click on the watching you get you get to see your watch your watch items list and let's say I want to go into one of the items it'll load up I'm a bit further away from my internet connection right now which is why it's taking a bit longer and then you got you can do a buy it now unwatch the item or watch the item buy more than one you could tap this okay that's actually in a different section you can tap it you got some information and details about the seller the brand of the item and everything, their, their positive feedback and negative feedback and you can also, if I scroll all the way over here, look at the information of the item and you can really scroll in a very very nice and smooth pretty much pre-rendered sort of like section of the information so you don't have to wait for it to load or like anything like that so it's extremely nice to use and if I go back you can see you can just again swipe there and then just go back to look at other items as well one thing I'm going to say which is interesting about these apps though if you tap on the search bar or on a search box with the touch screen an on-screen keyboard appears. Now this is actually really quite strange to have on a laptop or, or a desktop computer. Uh, desktops don't really have touch screens right now, but I digress. But, uh, what's actually, but what this is actually sort of like showing is that this was also, uh, Windows 8 was also designed in mind for tablets. So if you had a tablet device that does not have a keyboard like I've got down here, all you'd have is just the screen, then you'd be using this on-screen keyboard to input text. If you've got a laptop, it'll let you input text with either this keyboard as well as a second option, which is really quite strange, or with the actual keyboard you got on your computer. Now, this I've only, I'd say for desktops or laptops, I'd say it's only useful if you've got no backlighted keyboard and you're in a very dark area. But apart from that, this is really quite pointless to have on a laptop. So, the, if you could remove it, I would suggest you do that. But, you know, it's still there as an option. So, let's uh, search for something and uh, we'll just search for HP Pavilion. There you go. All works great. Now, you remember me saying if I actually touch this search box with uh, the uh, touch screen, then uh, the on-screen keyboard will appear. Well, if you actually use the trackpad to touch in the search box, the on-screen keyboard will not appear. So let's say I want to go back right over here. And let's say I want to click search with the trackpad. As you can see, no on-screen keyboard. So that's just something quite interesting I've noticed with these Metro-style applications. And what we've also got is a Metro Amazon app. And looks like someone's been at, someone's been at this recently. Uh, so as you can see, it works also quite nicely. And again, it's very, very smooth at scrolling. Just to show you guys, I'll just quickly type something down here. Let's just write down, since Avatar is right there, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Avatar. 
as you can see, on-screen keyboard works perfectly fine, but it's really quite redundant to have on a laptop or computer. So I've got other apps which I can't show you due to some personal information like Skype, eBay seller item, and you've even got a, a Twitter application as well. Now this app is called Metro Twit, which is kind of a crude name, but this lets you see all your tweets and all your private sort of uh, mentions and emails, uh, sorry, not emails, and direct messages and stuff. So there you go, you can see this like runs extremely nice. Direct messages, you've got your at mentions, various other things. So this is a very, very nice application. And these Metro apps are really, really nice and such a pleasure to use on the touch screen, as you can see right here. Now the last thing I'm gonna show you in this video is the Marketplace. So the Marketplace loads up really quite quickly and then here you've got a whole plethora of applications to choose from. And I've gotta say, Win Windows Phone took a very, very long time to introduce some really good and like necessary applications. But it looks like uh, the Windows market for the desktop is actually doing much quicker than the Windows Phone market. So as you can see, you've got some HP picks over here. If you've got a Dell laptop or other brands of laptops, they should have their kind of picks. And you've also got games right over here, which many people will be choosing from. But these are more like, uh, these are pretty much uh, just uh, just mobile games, really. You've got some stuff like Asphalt 8 right there. You've also got some GTA games as well, which will be very, very interesting to use. Since you've got a computer here, you can connect controllers to it, uh, like a 360 controller, or just use the keyboard, and you should be able to get a very decent gaming experience with these basic kind of games right here. Let's use this uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas as an example. If you tap into an app, you've got screenshots here, which you can scroll between like this. As you can see, very, very nice experience right there. And you've got your rating of the game here, you can buy the game there, you'll even get trial versions of games, or they'll also let you get them for free. And if you just scroll between here, you get some ratings and some reviews from people, and various other users, and overall, it's just an extremely nice experience. And it even gives you some more information here, as uh, what, what supported processes it has, uh, what permission it will need from you to sort of like gain access to. So overall, this has been an extremely nice experience thus far, I really can't fault. Uh, the Windows 8 tiled interface. You can go into the desktop just by pressing this right here and it'll take you into the desktop. And But I, one thing I do kind of miss is the fact that you normally have that start bar at the bottom on the actual desktop operating system. If I press it now, it'll just take you back to the Metro interface. I really do miss, miss the start bar on Windows 7 and previous versions of Windows. But overall, this has been an extremely nice experience and I've become really, really fond of it. In fact, People actually say that uh, Windows are copying Apple in terms of Apple bringing a bit of their mobile operating system to their desktop operating system. I say to a certain degree that's true, but this definitely seems to be better. I've got a Mac, and I've got to tell you, I've actually been experiencing uh, the, the sort of like mobile phone operating system being translated to the desktop on Windows much more than I've been preferring uh, the launch pad on Mac OS X. This just seems so much more intuitive and so much more functional. Meaning, if I actually use the launch pad on Mac OS X, I would not want to stay there for long. I just want to go in there, dive into an application here and there. But here, everything's, pretty much all my stuff seems to be like organized extremely well, and it just seems like you'd want to keep spending as much time as you possibly can in this Metro interface. So, that's about all I can say for this interface so far. Really, I really, really do like it. And stay tuned for my future coverage, including a gaming test where I'm going to be throwing some high-end games at this laptop, and we'll see how it performs, especially when you consider that the price of this laptop is around the £600 mark. So, thank you guys again very much for watching. This has been Eric from ecotman12.blogspot.com. Please thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see all of you next time. Take care.